Hi guys, the next book we will be looking at, we will be reading is, hold on, next book we'll be reading is, Goofy Joins the Circus and Adventure in Russia, Disney Small World Library. Gosh, said Goofy, Moscow sure is a pretty city, Mickey, Minnie, Goofy, Morty, and Ferdy were visiting Moscow, the capital of Russia. They were riding through a part of town known as Red Square. Then Mickey asked the taxi driver to stop. This looks like a good place to take some pictures, he said. Look at the building over there, cried Morty. It looks like a fairy tale castle, said Minnie. That's St. Basil's, Basil's Cathedral, Mickey explained, glancing at his guidebook. And that's Kremlin, Kremlin. It says here that the Kremlin is filled with special paintings called icons and golden treasures from long ago. Oops, sorry about that. Their next stop was Groki Park, a huge public park in the center of Moscow. Mickey and Minnie went for a ride on a boat with Morty and Ferdy with Goofy, while Goofy rode the giant Ferris wheel. Then, when they got off the ride, they joined Goofy for, for a stroll through the park. All around them were flowers and fountains and the people playing chess. Look, cried Morty, there's some kind of show over there. He ran over and asked the man what was going on. This is a juggling contest, the man said. The winner gets to perform with the Moscow Circus when it goes to St. Petersburg. Imagine that, said Minnie. The Moscow Circus is one of the most famous circuses in the world. Gosh. Gosh, explained Goofy. His eyes glued to one of the performers. Look at how many rings she has in the air at once. That sure looks like fun. Each juggler was better than the one before. Then Goofy noticed some clown juggling balls while riding unicycles. One clown kept pretending to fall, but he always managed to catch himself just in time. Why is he dropping all those balls? asked Morty as one as one by one the balls flew into the audience. It's just part of the act, said, said Mickey. He's got lots more to juggle, but Goofy was eagerly waiting for his chance to help out. I'll catch them for you, he shouted, and with that he danced toward the clown, catching the falling balls and tossing them back again. The crowd began to laugh. Goofy was a hit. His timing was perfect, and he didn't miss a single ball. While the first ball flew far from where he was standing, Goofy dived to catch it in his hat. By this time, the crowd was roaring with laughter. Everyone began to gasp, clap. Gosh, thanks, said Goofy as he took a bow. The crowd went wild. You've won the contest, cried the ringmaster. Me, said Goofy. I was just, I was just having fun. I'm no juggler. Tell him, Mickey. Why, Mickey said, you were terrific, and we can all go to St. Petersburg to watch you perform. Great. Then come with me, said the ringmaster excitedly. There were, there are some people I'd like you to meet. The ringmaster took Goofy to the circus hall, where he introduced Goofy to two jugglers named Andrea and Tan Tanya. Tanya. The juggler showed Goofy around and took him to meet other performers. Katrina, the trapeze artist, was practicing part of her act. I'm so happy to meet you, Goofy, she called down. I hear you are quite a juggler. Gosh, I didn't know about that, replied Goofy, blushing, but I'm going to try my best. I'm sure you'll be terrific, said Katrina. Goofy began to, began to get nervous. What if I can't juggle, he thought to himself. What if they boo me off the stage? Andrea and Tyan
Andrea and Tanya took Goofy to meet Misha, animal trainer. Misha handed several clubs to two bears and beamed proudly as they began to juggle them. Oh no, Goofy said to himself, even more worried, even the bears can juggle better than I can. Then the loud trumpeting of an elephant made Goofy forget all about juggling. Come meet Natasha, said Misha, leading Goofy to the elephant's cage. She's quite a performer, but I can't wait to see your act, he continued. Here you're quite a performer, too. Goofy got even more nervous. He fainted into a big pile of Natasha's hay. Natasha didn't want anyone taking a nap in her hay. She woke Goofy up with a trunk full of water. Where am I? stammered Goofy. You're still at the circus, said Misha, laughing, but you'll but you should probably get some rest. I'll show you to your dressing room. Goofy had a very bad case of stage fright. I don't feel very well, he said, clutching his stomach. Maybe I shouldn't juggle after all. Don't worry, said Misha. You'll we'll help you feel better in no time. Katrina fed Goofy some workish a Russian soup. Alexa the clown gave him some thin pancakes called Blinkis served with caviar, a Russian delight of fish eggs. Andrea and Tanya gave him tea with honey. Goofy was starting to feel a little better. I have a confession to make, he said. I'm not really a juggler. That's all right, Goofy replied. Ogla the acrobat, but Ogla the acrobat kindly. Don't be nervous, you're going to do just fine. Goofy felt a little more cheerful in the morning. It was fun being part of the circus, he decided. There was so much to do and see. He had new friends, and his old friends were there, too. Best of all, new friends and old were going to St. Petersburg on the circus train together. They all arrived in St. Petersburg on a beautiful sunny morning. You must let us take you and your friends to see some of the sights of this wonderful city, said Tanya to Goofy and his friends. Let's begin with the, with the summer palace of Cesar Peter, who ruled our country for many years. The hydrofoil will get us there in no time. What is a hydrofoil? asked Morty. You'll see, said Tanya, as she led everyone to a dock. Everyone climbed aboard a strange-looking boat. Slowly the vehicle pulled away from the dock. Then suddenly, it, as it picked up speed, it rose out of the water. Gosh, said Goofy, how did we do that? You're riding a special. You're riding on. But we're riding on special water wings. The trip will be very fast and very smooth. Explained Tanya. Peter the Great was one of the most powerful rulers in history. Tanya told Goofy and his friends. He spared no expense when he had his palace built for himself and his wife, Catherine I. I've never seen anything so grand, said Minnie. Later, when they were touring the grounds, Goofy discovered the trick fountain. You need to have perfect timing to avoid getting wet, Tan said Tanya. But it was too late. Goofy was already soaked. I sure hope my timing is better than this during the show, Goofy said to himself. That night, Tanya and Andrea invited everyone to see the Curva Ballet. Curva Ballet. Inside the building, the twinkling lights from crystal chandeliers made everything glow. Suddenly, the lights dimmed and the music began. No one said a word as the dancers performed the ballet of Swan Lake. When it was over, Goofy stood up to applaud. He couldn't help but notice how proud and happy the dancers looked as they looked, took their final bows. I'll do my very best tomorrow night, Goofy said to himself. Then everyone will stand up and clap for me, too. Goofy woke up early the next morning and began to practice. By the time the show was ready, Goofy waited to hear the lively, funny music. Then he ran out and into the center ring. The audience watched as Goofy did a crazy flip 
and somersaults, and he juggled balls and then rings. Then Goofy took his eyes off the rings for a minute, and they began to slip right over his hand, head and down past his shoulders one by one. This mu It's mighty hard to juggle this way, folks, said Goofy, whose arms were now clamped close to his body. Before he knew it, there wasn't one ring left in the air. The crowd stood up and chanted his name. Goofy, 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 they cried. Goofy stood there proudly and took one bow after another. Gosh, he said, I had no idea I was this good. You were great, said Mickey, running up to congratulate him. Well, I tried as hard as I could, said Goofy, and that's the most important thing. The End